In 2023, Dr. Yu, Emily Yu, a 45-year-old dermatologist from Irvine, California, faced serious legal charges following allegations of poisoning her husband, Jack Chen, a radiologist, by adding a Drano-like liquid to his tea. The accusation emerged amidst an ongoing acrimonious divorce and custody battle over their two children. The indictment came after Chen noticed an unusual taste in his daily tea, started in early April of 2022, and decided to investigate by installing cameras in their kitchen. The footage from July 11th, 18th, and 25th showed Yu pouring liquid from a drain cleaner bottle into Chen's tea. Chen's subsequent health issues, including stomach ulcers, prompted him to hand over tea samples to the Irvine Police Department, which, after analysis by the FBI, confirmed the presence of the drain cleaner, Yu was arrested in August of 2022 and released on a $30,000 bond. Following her arrest, Chen filed for divorce and obtained a temporary restraining order to protect their two children from Yu, citing years of domestic abuse, including sleep deprivation as punishment. Yu's legal representation contested the allegations, suggesting that Chen set up the cameras to trap Yu and to gain an advantage in their divorce proceedings. They argued that Chen had manipulated the situation despite you being the primary breadwinner thanks to her successful Newport Beach dermatology practice. The case has raised questions about Yu's future in medicine as she must self-report to the Medical Board of California, which will decide on her ability to continue practicing. As of the latest update, her medical license remained active pending trial. Yu pleaded not guilty to three felony counts of poisoning and one felony count of domestic battery with corporal injury. She is facing a maximum sentence of over eight years if convicted on all counts. Number 8. The Rock Doc In 2024, Jeffrey W. Young Jr., a 49-year-old nurse practitioner from Jackson, Tennessee, known as The Rock Doc, was imprisoned for orchestrating a complex scheme involving the illegal prescription of opioids, including fentanyl and oxycodone. Young's medical practice, Preventagenics, became a focal point of controversy due to his unorthodox methods and the creation of a party-like atmosphere. His actions were not confined to his clinic. Young sought to expand his notoriety through a self-produced reality TV show attempting to capitalize on his rock doc persona. Before his arrest, Young portrayed himself as a fun-loving, adventurous medical practitioner. He attempted to launch a reality TV career with the show centered around his clinic's day-to-day -day operations. The self-produced show aimed to highlight a lifestyle that included partying in clubs, lots of social drinking, motorcycle riding, and showcasing his interactions with glamorous assistants and patients who lauded his approach to healthcare. Young's clinic was characterized by a party style which combined with his behavior contributed to his popularity on social media and within his local community. However, beneath the surface of these antics lay a dangerous and illegal operation. Young exploited his position to prescribe medically unnecessary opioids to hundreds of patients, including those with whom he had personal and inappropriate relationships. It was alleged that some of these prescriptions were exchanged for sexual favors. The investigation into Young's activities revealed that his illegal prescribing habits had been ongoing since at least 2015, with authorities failing to intervene until 2019. Despite accumulating evidence of his misconduct, including sexual assault accusations and patient privacy violations, Young was allowed to continue his operations, partly due to his claimed connections with local law enforcement. The Department of Justice and the Drug Enforcement Administration, DEA, led the charge against Young, highlighting his case as a significant abuse of the medical profession's trust and the prescription pad's power. It was ultimately sentenced to 20 years in prison in March of this year. Number 7. Daniel Barton In 2021, at St. Elizabeth Hospital, in Boardman, Ohio. A dispute between two physicians concerning patient care escalated into a physical altercation, 
leading to the arrest of Dr. Daniel Barton, who owned his own practice called Associates in Nephrology. The conflict began over a text message sent by a cardiologist to Dr. Barton, inquiring about the halting of prescribed medication for a patient. The situation intensified when the two doctors discussed the issue in person, with Dr. Barton accused of shoving the cardiologist during the confrontation. Witnesses, including a registered nurse and another employee, confirmed seeing the shove, leading to an intervention by the onlookers. Dr. Barton was subsequently charged with assault and booked into the Mahoning County Jail, though he has since been released on bond. Mercy Health clarified that Dr. Barton is not an employee of their facility. Number 6. Jesse Kunkel In March of 2023, Dr. Jesse Kunkel from Murraysville, Pennsylvania, was arrested following charges of writing fraudulent and illegal prescriptions for controlled substances like Xanax and Adderall since 2018. The investigation by the Office of Attorney General uncovered that Kunkel had been prescribing medication to patients and retaining a portion of these pills for herself. It was further found that Kunkel engaged in writing prescriptions for herself using former patients insurance without their knowledge and provided drugs to individuals she had personal relationships with, bypassing necessary medical evaluations and disregarding potential health risks. Facing 29 charges including acquisition of a controlled substance by fraud and delivery of a controlled substance, Kunkel's preliminary hearing was scheduled for March 15, 2023, but there have since been no reports as to the conclusion of her case. Number 5. Frank Sutton Jr. and Kenneth Beckham in 2022 following an Imagine Dragons concert at PNC Arena in Raleigh, North Carolina. A confrontation led to a police officer being injured and the subsequent arrest of two men, including an anesthesiologist employed by Duke University. 51-year-old Frank Sutton Jr. and 52-year-old Kenneth Beckham, both residents of Raleigh, North Carolina, were involved in an altercation after refusing to leave the venue. Sutton's aggressive actions resulted in an officer requiring 10 to 15 stitches for a head wound. Beckham was accused of shoving the officer who was attempting to arrest Sutton. Sutton faced charges including assaulting a law enforcement officer, causing serious injury, resisting a public officer, and second-degree trespassing, while Beckham was charged with assaulting a government official, resisting a public officer, and second-degree trespassing. Both individuals were barred from returning to PNC Arena. Duke University acknowledged Sutton's association with them as an anesthesiologist but did not disclose how the incident might affect his employment. By the next day, both men had been released on bond. Number 4. Lynn Columbus In 2014, 50-year-old Dr. Lynn Columbus was arrested at Gulf Coast Pain Management in Clearwater, Florida, for allegedly using fraudulent prescriptions to obtain controlled substances, specifically oxycodone, for personal use. The Pinellas County Sheriff's Office initiated the investigation in November after receiving a tip about Columbus writing prescriptions under patients' names at various pharmacies throughout Pinellas County. Surveillance footage captured Columbus collecting one of these prescriptions. She held a role on Pinellas County's Prescription Advisory Committee aimed at combating pill mills. Columbus faced two counts of obtaining or attempting to obtain controlled substances by fraud. Following her arrest, she was taken to Pinellas County Jail and later released on a $10,000 bond. Number 3. Ji Allen Cheng. In 2023, Dr. Ji Allen Cheng, a 33 year old gastroenterologist, formerly associated with New York Presbyterian Queens Hospital in Astoria, New York, faced serious allegations and a multitude of charges. Initially arrested on December 27, 2022, Cheng was charged with drugging and assaulting a female acquaintance in his Queens residence. 
This incident unveiled a series of distressing revelations about Cheng's conduct, both at his home and within the hospital premises where he practiced until his termination in December 2022 following the allegations. Subsequent investigations propelled by the initial accusation exposed the scope of Cheng's criminal activities. In total, Cheng faced 50 new counts related to the sexual abuse of three hospital patients and the assault of three other women in his home as announced by the Queen's District Attorney's Office. The charges included predatory assault, sexual assault in the first degree, sexual abuse in the first degree, assault in the second degree, criminal sexual act in the first degree, unlawful surveillance in the second degree, criminal possession of a controlled substance in the seventh degree, and criminal possession of a weapon in the fourth degree. Prosecutors with evidence from videos found in Cheng's possession identified seven victims and suggested there were at least six others assaulted across various locations including Westchester County, Manhattan, Las Vegas, San Francisco and Thailand. These videos depicted unconscious female hospital patients and female acquaintances being sexually assaulted. It was revealed that Cheng used sedatives such as propofol and sevoflurane alongside narcotics like fentanyl, ketamine and LSD, which were found during a search of his home. A particularly harrowing account involved a 19-year-old patient at New York Presbyterian Queens who reported an unnecessary rectal exam performed by Cheng while under sedation leading to her unconscious assault. This victim's case underscored the hospital's alleged failure in handling her complaints appropriately, including not notifying the police or preserving forensic evidence. Cheng's legal team asserting his not guilty plea faced the daunting evidence amassed by prosecutors, including Queen's District Attorney Melinda Katz, who described Cheng as a sexual predator of the absolute worst kind. Cheng, whose medical license was suspended following his arrest, remained in custody without bail, facing potential sentences of 25 years to life for his crimes. Today's topic was requested by Nathan Dosung, 3474, Rafa, 0821, LOL, and Peng Wing, 638. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comment section below. Number 2. Anjali Ramkisun. In 2016, Anjali Ramkisun, a fourth year neurology resident at Jackson Health System in South Florida, faced severe professional and personal repercussions after her behavior towards an Uber driver in Miami's Brickell area was captured on video and went viral. The incident unfolded in the early morning hours when Ramki Soon, dealing with personal stresses including her father's hospitalization and a recent breakup, attempted to enter an Uber that she had never ordered. Her aggressive actions during the altercation included attempting to hit the driver, kneeing him in the groin, and throwing various items from his car, including a master lock, scissors, and the driver's iPhone. The confrontation was recorded by Juan Cinco, another customer, who had actually ordered the Uber. He uploaded the video to YouTube, where it quickly garnered widespread attention. In the video, Ramki soon can be seen and heard exhibiting belligerent behavior and acknowledging it by stating, I'm getting really like belligerent right now. Following the video's release, Ram Ki soon experienced cyberbullying with harmful messages directed at her and her family's address leaked online. She publicly expressed remorse for her actions during an appearance on Good Morning America, stating she was ashamed and apologizing for the hurt she caused. Ram Ki soon highlighted the day of the incident as one of the worst of her life citing extreme stress as a factor contributing to her outburst. Despite her public apology, the incident had immediate consequences. The Uber driver declined to press charges but accepted a small monetary compensation from Ramki Soon for the damages. Uber 
subsequently suspended her account pending further investigation. Moreover, Jackson Health System placed Ramke soon on administrative leave and removed her from all clinical duties. The health system also launched an internal investigation to determine if further disciplinary actions, including termination, were warranted. We did an episode on when doctors go wrong almost three years ago. It's an interesting one as well, so if you'd like to watch that one as well, then stick around after number one. Number one, what's in a name? In 2018, Jeffrey Epstein, a 59-year-old doctor from Lakeland, Florida, was arrested at Orlando International Airport after police were called due to his erratic behavior. Upon seeing officers, Epstein reacted by throwing his hands in the air, yelling that the police had come to arrest him. He was removed from the ticket line and prohibited from flying because of his actions, then began frothing at the mouth and shouting obscenities. Despite being ordered to leave, Epstein resisted, exclaiming, I'm not resisting. You are treating me like a fucking black person. The incident, which led to his pepper spraying and arrest for battery on an officer among other charges, went viral on social media. After the confrontation, Epstein admitted to intentionally creating a disturbance to protest perceived injustices. Found in possession of marijuana, he was taken to a hospital for chest pain complaints before being booked into the Orange County Jail. Number 8. Ekaterina Fedeyeva 27-year-old Russian woman Ekaterina Fedeyeva was embalmed alive in 2018 after going to the hospital for a routine operation. Instead of a saline drip, doctors mistakenly gave her the formaldehyde-based drip formalin, which is commonly used to prevent cadavers from decomposing. The substance wrought havoc on her system. For two days, she suffered agonizing pain and convulsions before she was placed in a medically induced coma. By spreading throughout her body, the incredibly dangerous substance would have caused inflammation, ulceration, and necrosis in the lining of all her internal organs. Unsurprisingly, she died while on life support from multiple organ failure. At first, doctors had skirted around telling Fedieva's mother what happened and only vaguely admitted that a medical mistake had taken place. When the details of the mix-up were finally revealed, she accused the physicians of murder and was outraged that they did nothing to amend their mistake for 14 hours post-surgery. The incident sparked a criminal investigation for negligence against the staff and hospital. Number 7. John R. Killinger Jr. On June the 1st of 2017, John Killinger visited the emergency room at St. Joseph Hospital in Maine for an infection on the bottom of his right foot. The next day, an MRI was taken of his foot. Several days later, he was asked to return to see the doctor, and they discussed the need to amputate one of the toes on his right foot. After everything was set for the next day, the operation was deemed a success until they realized one crucial mistake. The operating surgeon, Dr. Darcy, had mixed up the feet and had amputated the right toe, but on the left foot. Killinger had to undergo another operation to get the correct treatment, but his nightmare still wasn't over. During his recovery, he developed an infection in his left foot and fractured all his remaining toes. It traveled up his leg, and he first lost all his left toes before getting the leg completely amputated below the knee. Two years after that first surgery, Killinger sued the doctor and hospital for medical expenses, loss of income, pain suffering, and his now permanent impairment. Facing a negligence lawsuit, the practice admitted to performing the wrong amputation but denied that it was the cause of his subsequent complications. Number 6. Ingolf Chuak Once the head of urology at St. Elizabeth Hospital in Brighton, Massachusetts, Ingolf Chuak was known as a respected doctor. That is until 2019, when he was fired from his job and then arrested for killing his wife just months later. In November of that year, Chuak was forced to pay a $150,000 settlement for falsifying thousands of dollars in billings and, in December, he married 45-year-old Kathleen McLean. By January, McLean had filed a domestic abuse report claiming Chuak had thrown her to the ground and, by February, she had taken out a restraining order on him. Her reports claimed he had slammed her head and strangled her while covering her mouth and nose. However, on May the 2nd, she decided to rescind the order for the sake of her family. Just two weeks later, she would disappear and then turn up dead in a small pond 
close to their home. McLean had injuries and bruising consistent with strangulation, to which Chuick would ultimately confess. He was found by the authorities in a hotel room, and they had to revive him with Narcan after a possible opioid overdose. In the hospital, he confessed that he had strangled McLean until she passed out and panicked upon realizing she was dead, dumping her weighed down body in the pond. Despite the confession during his arraignment, he pled not guilty, but was held without bail. Number four, Robert Ricketson. 73-year-old Arturo Itoralde went to see orthopedic doctor Robert Ricketson for corrective spine surgery. The operation included getting specially designed metal rods inserted in his back, but halfway through, Ricketson realized that they were too short. Unable to locate spare ones and unwilling to leave the minister on the table for two hours to get new rods, the doctor decided to use the shaft of screwdrivers he found in the operating room instead. After cutting them to size with a surgical hacksaw, he inserted them into Itoralde's back. Despite thinking he'd made a viable substitution, the stainless steel screwdrivers snapped just a couple of days post-surgery. Itoralde underwent multiple additional surgeries to correct the mistake, but he died within a week due to related complications. His family went on to sue Ricketson and the hospital for malpractice. It turned out Ricketson's medical license had been suspended in two other states before he moved to Hawaii. Itoralde's family won and were awarded $5.6 million in compensation. Number three, Christopher Dunch. Christopher Dunch earned the notorious nickname Dr. Death for seriously harming or killing many of his patients from 2011 to 2013. Within that relatively short time frame, the neurosurgeon operated on 38 patients in the Dallas area. 31 of them were left paralyzed or gravely maimed, and two of them died from complications. With a degree from a good school and an impressive residency under his belt, Dunch had the apparent background to match his overly confident demeanor. It was, however, largely unsubstantiated. Despite being a neurosurgeon resident for five years, he'd participated in less than 100 surgeries, while other residents averaged over 1,000. He could hide his lack of experience on paper, but not in his work. And during his very first surgery at the Baylor Plano Hospital, he left his patient with chronic back pain. It was the result of him operating in the wrong spot. He then left the patient paralyzed when they returned for a second surgery. As cases compiled, Dunch quit before he could be fired and continued to practice, even getting a job at a hospital after he was officially reported to the US Department of Health. His suspected drug use during his residency was revealed and other veteran doctors lobbied the Texas Medical Board for months to get his license revoked and then the district attorney's office to criminally charge him. An investigation revealed an email he'd sent about his readiness to become a cold-blooded killer, and he was sentenced to life in prison. Number two, Jessica Santillan. In 2003, 17-year-old transplant patient Jessica Santillan received the news she'd been waiting to hear, that there was a heart and lung available for her. She underwent surgery at Duke University Hospital, but in the excitement, a grave mistake was made. Her blood type wasn't checked against the organs before the surgery, and they didn't match. The hospital tried to cover it up, but her body was rejecting the organs, and for two weeks, they scrambled to get a heart and lung to match her blood. Astoundingly, they succeeded, but it was too late, and she was soon pronounced brain dead. The mistake had not only cost Santillan her life, but two sets of organs had been wasted in the process. The transplant surgeon, who had worked with Jessica for two years, accepted full responsibility for the mismatched organs. A settlement for an undisclosed amount was reached between her family and the hospital. Number one, Dr. Lawal Haruna. Boasting 25 years of experience, senior Dr. Lawal Haruna worked for two years with the Sheffield Teaching Hospitals Trust before he was struck off by a disciplinary panel. In March of 2015, a woman referred to as Patient B was admitted to the hospital complaining of intense abdominal pain, which was later diagnosed as appendicitis. Haruna headed her operation, but somehow, instead of removing her injured appendix, he took out her ovary. Luckily, the patient was no longer of childbearing age, but the implications of his mistake were still significant. The doctor admitted that he had mistaken her fallopian tubes as her appendix, as they have similar worm-like structures, but dismissed the incident as 
a trifle in error. It wasn't the first time he had made this mistake either. In two other botched surgeries, Haruna mistook a pad of fat as the appendix and a skin tag as a cyst. A panel eventually found him to be a danger to patients and banned him from practicing further. Thanks for watching. Would you rather get treated by a devilish doctor or have to spend a weekend in an overpopulated, gang ridden South American prison? Let us know in the comments section below.